Welcome back to Algebra Simple. Today we're going to be studying fractions, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions. A fraction is one number over another number representing a part of a whole. Now I can tell you that my experience as a teacher is fractions is where most students have trouble. Now it's also important to remind you that these first four videos that we're doing are review. They're not even algebra, they're pre-algebra. So if you need more help with fractions or you need more help with any of this introductory material, you might want to check out some more videos on YouTube. Now the fraction that we have here is 36 over 84. That represents 36 parts over 84 parts. Now with fractions, when the top number is bigger, that represents a bigger fraction. When the bottom number is bigger, that represents a smaller fraction, believe it or not. So this number here is less than one. Now I said that the top number is 36. Really, what we refer to the top number as is the numerator. And the bottom number is called the denominator. The numerator is the top number in a fraction. The denominator is the bottom number in a fraction. Now one thing about this fraction is it needs to be reduced. Reduce means to change the numerator and denominator of a fraction to the lowest numbers possible. It also means to simplify. So to get these numbers lower we're going to divide both the top and the bottom by 4. Now 4 over 4 is equivalent to 1. And you can divide any number by 1 and you're not going to change it. It's going to look different, but it's going to be the same number. It's just going to be reduced. And when you reduce it by 4, the answer is 9 over 21. But as you can see, our fraction can still be reduced even more. Let's divide the top and the bottom by 3. And that is going to equal 3 over 7. Now as you can probably guess, you could have divided 36 and 84 by 12 and gotten there a lot quicker if you would have known that they were both divisible by 12. But any way that you get to the reduction is fine. The answer is 3 sevenths. Now let's do a simple multiplication problem. We have 6 sevenths times 3 fifths. Now in fractions, we multiply the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. That is, we multiply across. 6 times 3 is 18, and 7 times 5 is 35. Our answer is 18 over 35. Let's multiply 25 over 24 times 32 over 55. Now first off, 25 over 24 is an improper fraction. An improper fraction is a fraction with a numerator greater than its denominator. In other words, a value greater than 1. Now before we multiply our fractions, they need to be reduced first. But the interesting thing is, when you reduce the numerator, you can reduce either denominator. In this case, 25 can be reduced by 5. 24 can't be reduced by 5, but 55 can. So let's reduce 25. We're going to divide it by 5. And correspondingly, we're going to divide the 55 by 5. And that will give us 11. Now look at 5 again and see if 24 can be reduced by 5. It cannot. Can 11 be reduced by 5? It cannot. So let's move over to the 32. Now 32 can be divided by 8. Can any other number be divided by 8? Well, the 24 can. So let's divide 32 by 8. And we have 4. And we're going to divide 24 by the same 8. And we have 3. Now let's look at the 4 again. Can the 11 be reduced by 4? No. Can the 3 be reduced by 4? No. So our fractions have been reduced to the simplest possible terms. We are ready to multiply. 5 times 4 is 20. And 3 times 11 is 33. And if we properly reduced our fractions before we started, we will not have to reduce our answer. And we have properly reduced our fractions and 20 over 33 is in the simplest terms. Now let's do a simple division problem. 
21 over 16 divided by 28 over 6. Now when you're dividing fractions, you have to invert the second number. Invert means to flip the second number upside down. There we go, we have 6 over 28. And we're no longer going to divide. We are going to multiply. And if you care to know the reason why we're going to multiply, division is the inverse of multiplication. So since we inverted the fraction, we are actually dividing. Now let's see if we can reduce this. 21 can be reduced by 7, and we have 3. Now 16 cannot be divided by 7, but 28 can. And we have 4. Now let's see if 16 cannot be divided by 3. 4 can't be divided by 3, so we're good there. Uh, the next numerator is 6. And uh, 6 can be divided by 2, and 16 can be divided by 2. And we have 3, and we have 8. And we've seen that the denominators cannot be divided by 3, so we are ready to multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, and 8 times 4 is 32, and that is our quotient. A quotient is the result of division. A product is the result of multiplication. Okay, let's try a little addition and subtraction. Now with addition and subtraction, we add the numerators or subtract the numerators across, but the denominators stay the same. So with this problem here, we have 7 plus 3 is 10. And like I said, the denominator remains the same. So we have 10 over 8, which is an improper fraction, but that's okay in algebra as we stated previously but we do need to reduce it. So let's divide 10 by 2. And of course we have to divide the denominator by the same amount. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And for this problem that will be our final answer. Now let's move on to subtraction. We have 13 6 minus 9 6 and if you look at the negative sign you can see that I put that at a slight slant. I do that so that the negative sign does not blend into the fraction bars or if you're working on theme paper, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a negative sign on the line and nobody sees it and you get the answer wrong. So anyways, 13, 6, minus 9, 6. Again, we are subtracting across with the numerator, not the denominator. So 13 minus 9 equals 4 and the denominator remains the same. We have 4 6, which of course we're going to reduce to 2 thirds. Okay, let's try a little more addition. Do you see what the problem is here? We have two denominators that are not the same. Now, with fractions, we cannot add or subtract unless the denominators are the same. We call it a common denominator. And so we are looking for the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator, often referred to as LCD, is the lowest number that can be used to keep the denominator common. That is the same. Now the lowest common denominator for 6 and 9 is 18. But if you didn't know that, this is how you figure that out. Let's break the two numbers into their lowest parts. 6 is 2 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. Now we have two numbers up there. We have two and we have three. I understand we have three threes, but we have two different numbers up there. So let's start with two. Which number has the most number of twos? That would be six. Six has one two. Nine doesn't have any twos. Now which number has the most number of threes? That would be nine. Nine has two threes. 6 only has 1 3. So we're going to take the 3's from the 9. So let's take all the numbers that we've circled and we have 2 times 3 times 3 which equals 18 and that is going to be our lowest common denominator. So how do we get our denominators to be 18? Well we're going to multiply 6 by 3 and don't forget whatever we multiply the denominator times we have to multiply the numerator times. That is, we're multiplying our fraction times 3 over 3. 
3 over 3 is 1 and as we discussed before, we can multiply any number times 1 or divide any number times 1 and we don't change it. It's going to look different and it's going to function in a way that we can use it, but we really haven't changed our fraction. Now the 9, we are going to multiply times 2. And of course that's 2 for the denominator and the numerator. Now let's go back to the first number. 3 times 5 is 15 and 3 times 6 is 18. 2 times 4 is 8 and 2 times 9 is 18. Well now the fractions have a common denominator so we can add 15 plus 8 is 23 and of course our denominator remains the same. Our answer is 23 eighteenths, which cannot be reduced, so that is our final answer. Now let's try a subtraction problem that doesn't have a common denominator. How about 2 thirds minus 1 sixth? Now our common denominator is going to be 6, which means we need to get 3 to be a 6, so let's multiply 3 times 2. And of course, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. 2 times 2 is 4 and of course we only subtract the numerator and we keep the denominator the same. And we have 3 6 which can be reduced. Let's see 3 can be divided by 3 and 6 can be divided by 3. So and we have 1 half which is our final answer. And that is the end of this lesson. Homework is on pages 16 and 17.